Elden Ring has spawned so many iconic memes, from Let Me Solo Her, to Being Called Maidenless, to the community's awareness campaign for prostate cancer. But Elden Ring also brought back one of the most popular memes from the Middle Ages. Snails. Across illuminated manuscripts, prayer books, even on the outside of the famed Chartres Cathedral, you can find knights fighting, and often losing to, snails. Scholars aren't exactly sure why snails keep popping up, but there are a few theories. For starters, it's just hilarious to see armored knights fighting armored snails. Since printing, engrossing, and carving these works was a very time-intensive and tedious process, creating snails and other marginalia could have been a way to blow off steam. And by being so absurd, this dung posting could also let creators mock the ruling class, without the nobles, knights, and clergy ever catching on. So by including multiple snail enemies, FromSoft lets the Tarnished recreate absolutely goofy scenes from the Middle Ages, but with a modern twist. <laughs> but snails weren't always comic relief or satire. Since snails leave a disappearing trail of slime, this was seen as a metaphor for the body dissolving. And so, snails became a symbol for death. As medievalist Lisa Spangenberg pointed out, this connection most likely came from the Bible, which directly mentions snails in Psalm 58. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear. As a snail which melteth, let every one of them pass away, like the untimely birth of a woman, that they may not see the sun. So fighting snails could be seen as a metaphor for fighting death itself. Somewhat paradoxically, snails sometimes accompanied depictions of the Virgin Mary. There is a theory for this. Back then, people weren't exactly sure how snails could reproduce with their shells on. So snails were thought to be asexual, which could explain how they became a symbol for the Virgin Mary. As it turned out, a lot of snail species are hermaphroditic and can even self-fertilize. And since snails were symbols of both the virgin birth and death, this could further explain why they also appeared near the Passion and Resurrection. Elden Ring continues this symbolic legacy by linking its snails with death and resurrection as well. Let's start with these snails, which have skulls as their shells. Alongside the death birds and death right birds, these skull snails can fire skulls of ghost flame which bear vengeful spirits. As we learn from the explosive ghost flame spell, in the time when there was no Erd tree, death was burned on ghost flame. But with the rise of the Golden Order, this ancient death hex was thoroughly suppressed. In fact, this once common practice was even thought to be completely lost, but was only rediscovered by necromancer Garrus. I think Garrus was able to rediscover the power of the death hex by studying the snails. When you walk through the boss door to fight Garrus, you'll see him standing right next to a skeletal snail. And in order to rediscover the ancient death hex, he had to study either the death birds, the snails, or those who live in death. There are those who live in death in the cave where you fight Garrus, but none of them seem to shoot out ghost flame. While there are a handful of the death birds and death right birds across the lands between, the skull snails are much more common. And unless you're a knight in the Middle Ages, the snails are much easier to fight, which makes them much easier to acquire, research, and befriend. As for Garrus himself, he can be seen as either a tragic figure or an absolute monster. He drops the family heads mace, which has bronze heads, casting the image of his spouse and children. And its unique ash of war, familiar rancor, summons vengeful spirits that chase down foes. The anguish of a spouse and children invites accursed wrath. I couldn't find any other indication for how his family may have died, so I see one of two implications. Garrus either turned to necromancy to avenge his murdered family, or he murdered his own family to fully unleash the power. Either way, his research into the ancient death hex was completely opposed to the Ur tree and had to be done in secret. The game does a great job of conveying this through environmental storytelling. For starters, Garrus wears the Sage's set, which reveals he's a heretical sorcerer who's been run out of town. Inside the cave, you can find the Candle Tree Shield, which shows a forbidden and surreptitious prophecy of Cardinal Sin, the burning of the Ur tree. The Sage's cave also has the Raptor's Black Feathers, which are worn by the Raven Mountain Assassins, who themselves imitate the Death Birds. And there's even a Black Knife Assassin right next to Garrus' arena. She's probably in hiding following the Knight of Black Knives. And the cave would be a great hideout. It's in the shadow of Mount Gelmir, the home of the Lord of Blasphemy himself. After Garrus rediscovered the ancient Death Hex, Rykard would later fuse that power with his own magma sorceries to create Rykard's Rancor. 
Given all the heretical items we see in the Sage's Cave, and its proximity to the Volcano Manor, Vygod probably gave Gera sanctuary in exchange for using his research. But that is speculation. The Volcano Manor already has another scholar who was most likely using snails in his research. Tunnel snakes rule! If you explore the hidden tunnels of the Volcano Manor, you can find an escargatoire of serpent snails. Keep going and you'll come across the spirit ashes for the depraved perfumer Carmen. According to the item description, Carmen was reportedly in search of a secret physic of revivification. If concocted, this could presumably resurrect fallen warriors. And so, this would act as a compelling rival to the power of grace, and could potentially level the playing field with the Golden Order. I can definitely see why Rikard would be interested in such a power, so it would make sense why Carmen would find a home at the Volcano Manor. Since Carmen's ashes are surrounded by serpent snails, I think it's safe to assume that he was experimenting with those snails, craft his physic of revivification. It may seem a bit odd to rely on lethal serpent snails to develop a life-reviving physic, but in our own world, scientists have used the venom from snakes and snails to create all kinds of medicine. Often, the only difference between a cure and a poison is dosage. This link between healing and poisoning is seen elsewhere in the game. The serpent snails drop serpent arrows, which do poison damage. But the arrows also have a helix pattern that's surprisingly similar to the top of the Flask of Wondrous Physic. In fact, this helix pattern is a really common motif for death and rebirth. Over on Reddit, Moonslippers has a great thread examining this motif. And there is already a group of snails with the power of resurrection, the Spirit Caller Snails. True to their name, the Spirit Caller Snails can summon all kinds of enemies. Like the other snails, there isn't a single line of lore about the Spirit Caller Snails, so we have to rely on environmental storytelling. When they wiggle their heads to summon, they emit purple waves. Now, those waves are almost identical to when the Tarnished uses the Spirit Calling Bell. I'm assuming whoever crafted that bell based it on studying the snails. As for how the snails can summon, the Spirit Caller snails sometimes drop Grave Glovewood. You can use this to upgrade your Spirit Ashes. And the Glovewood does have bell-shaped flowers. Now in our world, Glovewood was once a name for Lily of the Valley, which can be very, very poisonous. But snails can eat it. So I think the snails ate the grave glovewood and then gained the ability to summon, while any other creatures would have simply died. Until very recently, I was positive that Renner, the Snow Witch, created the bell. But as we all know, FromSoft announced an expansion for Elden Ring. In the one and only screenshot they released, we can see a blonde rider that looks a lot like Mikola, astride a steed that looks a lot like Torrent. So there is definitely a chance that Mikola invented the spirit calling bell. The spectral steed whistle was made out of gold, and you can find one of the bell bearings for Ghost Glovewood near the bottom of the Halic tree. But based on everything we know in the game so far, I still think Renner is more likely. After all, Rani as Renner gives the Tarnished the Lone Wolf Spirit Ashes, and in the game, the only other enemies who can summon wolves are Vanala and the Spirit Calling Snails. Renner's body has four arms like the Wraithcallers, who use a Wraith Calling Bell to summon wraiths. Torrent also likes the Frozen Raisins, which could suggest he came from the Frozen North. And you can find the most Spirit Calling Snails in the Spirit Caller Cave, in the mountaintops of the Giants. Now, the Spirit Caller Cave even has a Spirit Calling Snail that can summon a Godskin duo. This particular snail can actually shed some light on one of the most mysterious figures in Elden Ring, the Glomite Queen. But that's a video for another time.